Should I buy first or sell first? Please make sure to hit like, share, and subscribe and hit that little bell icon to make sure that you don't miss any future videos. We put them out on a weekly basis. Today, we are gonna to talk about selling a house and buying a new one at the same time. Now, if you're like most people out there, you currently own your own house and you have a mortgage that you're repaying back to the bank. When it comes time for a housing change and you wanna go buy the new house that's bigger, smaller, whatever, doesn't matter, you wanna move your equity from the house that you currently have into the new one. The very first question that you might wanna consider is what do I do first? It's a really, really difficult question and unfortunately there's no easy answer, but I'm gonna talk about a few things today that might help you through that process. So the very first thing we need to talk about when it comes to this is what kind of market are we in right now? If we are in a very heavy seller's market, which means it's very, very easy to sell a house, but the difficult part is buying one. When you have to buy and sell at the same time, the thing that you should focus on first is the one that's more difficult. So in this case, buying. You need to go out there and search for homes. You need to go out there, get looking, go to the bank, get pre-approved, shop for homes, ensure that there are homes out there that meet your needs before you really focus about getting your house up on the market. Ideally, what you'd like to do is you go out, you find a new house that you would like to buy and you wanna write an offer on that house. Now there's two ways to go about doing this if you need to move your equity from house A to house B. One of those things is writing an offer on the new host that's subject to the sale of your existing residence. There are pros and cons to doing it, which I can discuss in greater detail in a different video, but let's just start with the basics. Essentially, you need to move your money from this house to this house, right? So you're gonna offer on this house and you're gonna make it subject to sale of this one. So that means that you will only be able to remove conditions on this property to make that sale official when this house sells. The upside to doing that is it's a whole lot less risky financially for you and it protects you from potentially owning two homes at once or worse, not being able to own two homes at once and losing things like a deposit. But let's stop there for a minute and discuss the other way to do it. The other way to do it is to buy this house, but you do not make it subject to sale of your existing house. Now, why would you do that? I, I need this house to sell before I can qualify for this house. Right, but remember, we are in a very hot seller's market, which means it's very, very easy to sell a house. Now, as long as you have really great outstanding representation, and as long as you have an effective pricing strategy, and you have confidence that your house will sell quickly, it is okay to go and buy this other house without doing a subject to sale. Perhaps you can just negotiate a little bit of a longer possession date for your new house to allow you enough time to sell your existing house. So that's really how to do it if we are in a hot seller's market. What you should focus on is the harder thing, in this case, buying that new house. Now let's completely flip it around let's think we are in a very hot buyer's market so what that means is that there are more homes available to buy than there are people buying them so in that case it's going to be a lot more difficult to sell your house so in that case forget about buying for a second there's lots of homes out there there are lots of options for you don't worry about that the hard part right now is selling your existing house so it's really important again have proper representation and an effective marketing and price strategy get your house up on the market let's see how it goes what are people saying for feedback are we getting offers how many showings are we getting that kind of thing ideally what you want to do is get your house up on the market start kind of getting a feel for what the buyers are saying about your house seeing how your house stacks up to your competition out there and while all that's going on you should be out casually looking at new houses okay so not really ready to write an offer yet but you're kind of seeing what's out there maybe narrowing down a price range a neighborhood a style things Things like that. And then as soon as you get an offer on your current house, typically that offer is going to be subject to a couple of conditions. The two most common ones is subject to financing and subject to a home inspection. That time period is usually about two weeks. So you accept an offer on your house that is subject to financing and inspection for a two week time period. You now have two weeks to go out and find the house that you want to write an offer on. So all you need to do, write an offer on the house that you find. You are also going to write an offer subject to financing and subject 
subject to a home inspection. You just need to make sure that your condition dates on your purchase overlap the condition dates on your sale. So that way you know for sure that your house is 100% sold before you are going to remove conditions on your purchase. So again, there's no easy way to do this when you are buying and you are selling at the same time, moving equity from one property to the other, it can be very, very challenging. My advice to you is if this all doesn't work out perfectly and we can't align the dates perfectly, which is a long shot, you need a plan B. Can you afford to pay for more than one house for a short period of time? Can you cover two mortgages for one, two, three months? That will give you some flexibility. Do you have a backup plan on somewhere to live if you have a gap in housing because those are really your two options an overlap in housing or a gap in housing so you need to have a plan for both can you stay with family can you stay with friends can you rent an airbnb for a short period of time if it means getting the house that you want and getting the price for the house that you currently have that might be the best option for you so again what's best is what's best for you make sure that you consult with your real estate professional preferably me that's what i am here for to find out what is going to work best for you in your situation. So again, it really does depend on what kind of market that we're in, but there will be an option that works best for you. You just need some right advice to go along with it. I hope you found some value in this video. Again, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe and hit that little bell icon so that you don't miss any future videos that we put out on a weekly basis. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Jesse with the Loader Real Estate Group at eXp Realty, and we'll see you next time.